Hi, here we are at the Lars Training Center. Anytime you're servicing a piece of equipment, it must be performed by a licensed contractor. Also, gas and electric must be shut off prior to servicing that equipment. Thank you. My name is Steve Marizzi. We're here at the factory. We're going to talk about the Lars Pennant or Bradford White Copper Brew 2 Boiler. We're here to discuss combustion setup on those two products. This product range for BTU is going to be from 500,000 BTUs to 2 million BTUs. Alright, for starters, we're going to lift the upper cover and we're going to remove the 5 16 or Phillips head screws from the top panel. Okay, so now that we've removed the 5 16 screws from the top, there's also one Phillips head screw here that holds this to the, uh, the face of the control. So I'm going to pull the cabinet forward and lift straight up. Now what we're showing here is CSD1 certification that's high and low gas pressure switches, low water cutout, other controls as well. Single try for ignition on the ignition controls. We also have these valves attached to the gas valve for our testing uh, for the manifold pressures. So very first thing we're going to do is check the incoming gas pressure. So what we have here is a 1 million BTU boiler. It has three gas valves. We have one common gas drain that comes right across the top, comes down and feeds each valve. To check the incoming gas pressure, you can take off any one of the Allen keys from the top of the valves. You're going to use a 3 16 Allen wrench and remove it. Make sure your gas is shut off. So we've hooked up our bar in the gas valve. Okay. Um, then you can hook up your manometer, make sure you zero out your manometer, and obviously turn the gas back on. Okay? So as you can see, we have roughly 6.8 to 7 inches of gas pressure, and this boiler requires a minimum of 4 inches of gas pressure, so we have good gas pressure. The next thing I'm going to do, I want to check each manifold pressure. Okay, so next we're going to power up the boiler. Gas is on. We've checked the inlet gas pressure. So we're going to power up the boiler. It's going to take approximately 40 seconds to attempt to fire. Okay? Um, in the meantime, I'm showing CSD1. If you do not have CSD1, you will not have this little bar, um, 3 8 uh, fitting coming out. You'll just have another plug like this in the bottom of each valve. That's where your testing for each valve will take place. So. For the 500,000 to 2 million, the manifold pressure or downstream pressure of the gas valve is 2.5 inches of water column. So I'm going to start on my left hand side, work my way across. I'm going to wait till the boiler fires and we'll check each manifold pressure. So I remove the plug. I'm going to put the barb in position. Tighten the barb. And I will hook up my manometer hose. Next, I'll open the butterfly damper. We are looking for roughly, well, we're looking for 2.5 inches of water column. So you can see this valve is running a little high, we're at 2.9, so I'm going to make an adjustment. I'm going to take my flathead screwdriver, I'm going to take the aluminum cap off, I'm going to use a number 40's torque bit, making a slight adjustment and waiting for the manometer. So now you can see we're right around 2.5 for manifold pressure. We may bounce a couple of tenths up or down. Again, we want to be right around 2.5. With that valve done, I'm going to shut off the butterfly and I'm going to move to the next one over. Alright, with my bar in the butterfly fitting, I zeroed out the manometer again to make sure it's reading zero and I'll hook up the hose. The hose hooked up, I'm going to open the butterfly valve, and we're going to be looking again for 2.5 on this valve. As you can see, we're running about 2.6. 
so I'll make a slight adjustment on that valve as well by simply removing the aluminum cap, number 40's torque bit, making a slight adjustment and waiting for the manometer to come down to 2.5. Now I also want to mention to you, if you're hooking up the manometer, you have to wait till the valve fires because if the valve's not open, you're going to get a pressure reading from the blower. So make sure your valve is energized. You can either measure it or you can look right on the face panel. So you can also see here that we have a call for heat, the pump is on, and all our stages are lit. Alright? So, I'm going to make my adjustment, get it back to 2.5. Okay, now we can see we're close to about 2.5, give or take a couple of tenths. I'll shut off this valve, this butterfly valve, and I'll move my barb to my last gas valve. So with the last valve adjusted to close to 2.5, we're good with the valve adjustments. What we're going to do next is we're going to put the plugs back in, and we'll do hook up our combustion analyzer and set our air shutter. Before buttoning up, uh, I also wanted to mention you should be checking the inlet gas pressure with all valves running. So I put my bar back up on the inlet side. I'm measuring now with all three valves. But prior to that, we were running about seven and a half inches static gas pressure, and this is running pressure with all valves running. Also, keep in mind if you've got more than one boiler in that mechanical room, when you're completed setting up combustion. If it's a common gas train for all the boilers, you want to hook up a manometer to one of them and check it if you can with all valves firing. All right? Again, the minimum gas pressure here is 4 inches, the maximum is 13. Okay, with all valves running, we can take a combustion reading. We cannot take combustion reading with only one or two valves running, it has to be all valves. Uh, if you have a larger boiler, a 2 million, you may have two blowers. Okay. Uh, once all the manifolds are set at 2.5 inches of gas pressure, the only thing left is the air shutter adjustment. Okay. So we'll make an air shutter adjustment on the air shutters for the blowers, which is right here. Again, if you have two blowers, you don't only want to adjust one, you want to adjust both equally. Okay. So up here we're looking for 8% CO2, uh, which is what we have. Uh, lastly, what I want to mention to you is if you have combustion air ducting coming into the boiler, put the cover back on the boiler. Very simply, slide up the grooves, and get your reading. And the reason is if you have hypothetically 50 feet of vent, you don't want all your combustion air coming in from the front cover, you want it coming down through the vent. Okay, because our CO2 was at 8%, and that's what we're looking for, I'm actually going to put this out of range a little bit by opening my air shutter slightly. We'll wait for the analyzer, and then I'll show you just go back in and readjust it. Okay? Again, be patient with your analyzer. We're looking for CO2, which is right here. Okay, so as we can see, I opened the air shutter. Uh, now our CO2 is dropping. We've got excess air. So we're going to go back in and readjust it, all right? All I'm going to do is tap on that air shutter, and again, if I've got multiple blowers, I want to do it equally. You can measure it, okay? When you're done and you get it down to 8%, you might want to take a magic marker and just make a little mark there, all right? That way every year you're coming back to do combustion readings, you can tell where it is. Keep in mind, if you've got vented air or ducted air, you want to put the cover door back on the boiler. Okay, so we're right around 8.1%. Um, I will make one more slight adjustment just by moving the door back, tapping on my air shutter, putting the door back into position. The blower's on, so it'll hold it in position. If you're having trouble, just take one of the screws and put it back in to hold it. Okay, so now you can see we're at 8% CO2. 
Okay, so that's how to adjust combustion on the Lars Pennant or uh, Bradford White Copper Brew 2 boiler. Uh, if you have any technical questions, please contact our factory at 1-800-900-9276. Thank you.